Hey guys, it's been a little bit of time since I lasted a video. I just wanted to catch you up on everything that's been going on in my life recently. So back in August, I had my appointment, uh, well, my second appointment with Charing Cross, which was my first referral for uh, lower surgery. I don't know if we talked about this. I feel like we should have talked about this. If we didn't, then I'll do another video talking about it. Yeah, so went for my appointment, got my first referral for surgery, and at that point they were like, we're gonna send the referral to the uh, andrology team, and they're going to get in touch with you and sort out a consultation so you could talk about the different options, blah, blah, blah. So I was waiting and waiting and waiting and I wasn't getting anything through and I was like, it's taking a mickey a little bit. I asked on the group that I'm on and I was like, what's going on? And they were like, oh, just try getting hold of them. So I tried getting hold of them and they said they hadn't received my referral. And this was a good two months. It was two months after my appointment. And I was really confused because I was sure that I'd received mine, but I could have been wrong because I received so much that I just, I don't know what's what anymore. So I thought, not to worry, I'll get hold of Charing Cross. And Charing Cross were like, oh no, we haven't sent it out. Uh, we'll, we'll do that as soon as possible. You're on a high priority. I flagged it all out. It will be sent as soon as possible. So I'm like, yes, yeah, brilliant. All going to be sorted really soon. I got my referral through. I think it was a couple of days later after finding that I already had a copy of my referral. So they had already sent one. So I'm a little bit confused what's going on there. But second copy, I thought that's great. Andrology team should have theirs within the next couple of days. I gave it a week or two just to double check if not actually a little bit longer, maybe about a month. Got in touch with them a couple of days ago and they were like, we still haven't received your referral. So at this point, I'm now really confused as to why because I've now got two copies and they still don't have one. I've given up on Chase and Charing Cross, so they're gonna do it for me and hopefully they actually do. But in the meantime, it's basically, I've got to scan my copy, scan it, send it to them and then book my own appointment, which is fine. That's not a problem. I, I can deal with that. I will get it done. It means I can go for a consultation with the surgery team just to talk about the different options between meta and fallow and what would work best for me and what I want to get out of it, etc, etc. So I've been doing a lot of research on the surgeries recently and it's all a little bit intense and it's scaring me actually. I know I want something but at this point all of the risks and all of the all of the nightmares and horrible stories you hear, it's kind of really off-putting because it doesn't sound like anybody actually gets out of it okay. Like there's always something that goes wrong. That's going to take a lot more thinking. At the moment I'm not entirely sure where I sit with it because I don't want to go through all of it to find out that it's actually caused more problems than necessary. But yeah, we'll find out when I get there. I'll get to talk about it and see what's best. I'll probably end up taking someone in my family and probably my girlfriend as well because I mean, we might as well make it a family trip. So apart from that, uh, money problems had been a massive thing for me over the past couple of months and it was actually putting me into a bit of a, I say a bit, it was, it was putting me deep into a pit of depression. I felt everything getting darker and darker and I didn't quite know how to reach out and ask for help and I didn't basically, I didn't, I didn't really ask for help. I kind of just sat there and wallowed in my own misery thinking, oh my God, I owe nearly £4,000 because of this surgery that I had, my top surgery, and I don't know how I'm going to get out of it, I can't afford to pay for my food, I can't afford to pay for my rent, I'm not actually sure how I've got myself into this mess. I tried figuring out how I was going to afford it, I was thinking, oh my god, I'm going to have to get a part-time job even though I'm at uni, and I, I genuinely don't think I've got the time to try and figure out a part-time job that's actually going to accept that I'm going to be going off for six weeks at a time to be doing placements and it just I was I was panicking everything was just going crazy in my head and I didn't quite know what to do about it my girlfriend she tried her hardest to keep me going and was like come on we can sort this out we will figure it out I can help you with the money it will be fine and nothing she was saying was getting into my head and I was just getting more and more panicked and I was thinking this is it, I can't do it, I'm not actually going to be able to afford to live, I'm going to have to move back to my mum's, but my brother's taking my room, so I'm going to be stuck in this little cardboard box, basically, and I don't know, I, I just, I was panicking, I was making things worse for myself, <laughs> and my girlfriend actually sat down with me a couple of days ago, because she's really good on the finances thing, she's got like the spreadsheet, and you write down everything that you pay out, and everything that comes in, and you can see whether, you, whether your money's in the green or in the red, and there was me thinking I'm going to be like seriously in the red. It was my own stupid maths. I put my hands up to it. 
But due to my own maths, I kind of screwed it up. I thought I was going to have minus money. It appears I actually have money and I didn't realise I had it. All of that kind of went out the window, literally in moments. And it was, I was, I was torn between thinking, right, we've, we've done something wrong. Something isn't right on this spreadsheet because I shouldn't have money left over, at least not as much as though it was on there. She, she was content. She was like, I, I, I've done everything right. There is nothing wrong in this spreadsheet. You've just messed it up and put my hands up to it. I messed it up. I got myself into this massive pit of depression for nothing. Well, I say for nothing. I also had, when I had my surgery in France or attempted surgery in France, I got a credit card out. And this was so that I could pay for any extras whilst I was in France in case we ran out of money for food, transport, any other little tidbits that came up that we weren't expecting to pay for. Of course it didn't actually really get used for that because the surgery didn't happen, me and Maddie flew home early and it kind of, yeah, that was a bit of a bummer. But then I kept on using my credit card because stupid me, I thought, ah, oh, I haven't got money, let's just use the credit card. Until I think it was sort of beginning of summer, I was like, I've got £20 to spend on my credit card. I'm now paying however much a month, as well as interest, and I'm not actually getting any money onto this card, because every time I put the money on, they're taking the money back. And it's like, ah, I'm not actually paying this off. And that, that wasn't helping. I felt like I was just wasting money on this credit card, trying to pay it back, when in the first place, I didn't actually need this credit card. I just got it out because I thought I needed it for France, and in the end, I didn't need it for France. And then I spent it because I'm an idiot, and yeah, so again, everything was going into a big black pit of depression and it was a little bit horrifying, to say the least. Then my girlfriend turned around and she was like, you did realise now we've sorted out your money, you can actually pay off your credit card in one go. I remember just looking at her going, <laughs> you're joking, That's, it's not going to happen. And we looked down at my money and I paid it off in one go. It was nearly £600 on that credit card and I, I messed up that badly that I had that much plus extra to pay off this credit card when I thought that I was in this massive pit. So yeah, my credit card is now completely paid off, which is absolutely beautiful. I'm feeling so much better already. Everything's sort of got a bit more of a, I don't know, an up to it. I'm happier. Uh, I've, got, I've got two deadlines in uh, about six days, six and seven days, and I've done one, I've done one of them. Well, I've done 95% of one of them, and then I've done 0% of the other one, and I really need to get working on that. And that's the only thing that's bringing me down at the moment is uni work, because it's just, it's my own fault. I've had it for months. I've known that I needed to be doing it, and I just, I've just been my lazy self and leaving it till last minute, as I usually do. So that's sort of like getting to me a little bit. But otherwise, everything's going well. Um, I've been in the house alone for what, basically two days now, and I feel like I'm going a little bit insane. So I think that's why I've actually sat down and I've just been recording like endlessly all day. I recorded a couple of music videos, but well, I say music videos, it was videos of me playing music. It wasn't actually like massive music because that would be cool and get me even more money, but it's not that. It's just me singing and playing ukulele and it's not that great. But I'm probably going to put it on the channel anyway because then you get to hear what my voice is like when I sing. And it's not pretty, but I promised you I'd show you my whole life. And this is what I'm doing, so I'm showing you my whole life. Going back to the being home alone thing, there are many things that you have to do when you're home alone that you sort of, you kind of, you kind of rely on other people without realising. Simple things such as the washing up. Now I, I do, I do do the washing up, but it's slowly building and building and building and I can only blame myself because I'm the only one here. And I need to go and do the washing up and I just kind of keep putting it off and it just keeps getting worse and I don't understand how people do this and in my fridge for myself, I've got a bottle of orange juice, half a block of cheddar cheese, and uh, a little tub of soft cheese. And in the freezer I think I have a couple of breaded chicken bits, a pie, and some ice cream. I've got a little bit of pasta, and some peppers. And so basically I need to go shopping, and I've needed to go shopping for a while now, but again it's this whole adult thing, and I don't quite know how to do it on my own because I always do it with someone, but I don't want to go shopping on my own. I really don't want to go shopping on my own. I don't know why I don't want to go shopping on my own, but I just don't want to go shopping on my own. And so I'm kind of just eating whatever I've got left and it's very slowly running out. So I feel like I need to go shopping, but I just, I don't know how. I mean, I'm 23 and I'm scared of going to the shop 
on my own. I don't know if that's my anxiety or if it's just me being lazy or if it's a bit of both. Like maybe it's my anxiety making me feel lazy. I don't know. I just, there's something about going to a supermarket, getting a trolley, which is bad enough in the first place. You gotta do the pound and then that's scary enough. The pound doesn't work and then you gotta find the chain and you got trolley and it might not work properly and that's just the worst thing in the world and then you've actually got to go around and look like you know what you're doing and you've got to then get to the checkout and when the money <laughs> when it costs more than you plan it to you kind of panic inside and I don't want that panic so instead I've literally just been sitting on this sofa for the past few days playing Xbox and doing little bits of my presentation for uni which is 95% complete. As you can see there's kind of a lot and kind of nothing at the same time. Christmas was great, we spent the week before family far far away and then we spent Christmas actually at my family's. It was it was nice, it was, it was a really nice Christmas, it was a really nice couple of weeks but I literally did nothing and I'm feeling a little bit guilty now that I haven't done anything and I've got so much to do and I'm just procrastinating by talking to you guys actually it's just it's been out of focus the whole time but uh, we won't worry about that I'd love to do a video with my girlfriend at some point because we did Lucy and I uh, did one with Maddie uh, when I was with Maddie and the video we did was actually really helpful to lots of people that were partners of transgender people and I kind of want to do one with H as well because I I just want to show that even though like the partners might chat might make even though the partners might change like the the attitudes and stuff don't necessarily change like that I don't know how to explain it like if someone's gonna like Maddie and H have completely different outlooks on what it's like to be with me but it's still the same like. I don't care if you're trans, it's not like a big deal, like it's just, it's you, like yeah. So I kind of want to do one with her so she can explain it because I can't explain it because I don't quite get it. And then I was hoping to do another one with Maddie at some point because we do still talk and it would be nice just for you guys to sort of like see that how things had developed from that point where we did the video with Lucy to basically it not working out. I also want to do one with my family at some point because I realise I haven't actually done one with my family and I'd like for you to all get a sort of like an outlook on how they've been about this because I've sort of explained it from my side like oh yeah my brother was good, my mum it kind of went a bit it went, went a bit weird at first when I came out but that was my fault and then yeah I kind of want to let them say their sides of the stories as it's been it's been over two years since I came out now and I am two years on testosterone in April this year and a lot has happened since I came out and I feel like I want my family's input so you guys can see what a supportive family can and should look like as such. I don't want that to sort of be a thing where I'm rubbing it in your face because it's it's not. It's a case of there's a lot of trans people out there that think oh yeah no this this is what my mum's doing and yeah it's her being really supportive when actually it's them actually being quite sly and I don't know I don't I don't quite know what I'm saying here but I'll explain it a little bit further when I'm actually trying to put it together and yeah I'll talk to you all soon and I hope that you have a good January or whatever because I'm probably not going to talk to you till February again because life and yeah so have a good January I hope that uh, if you've made New Year's resolutions that you're able to stick to them and if you ever want to chat remember I'm here Got any questions, just give me an ask, give me a text, give me a drop on the video, I, uh, however you want to, the, the link's below, I shall, yeah, I'll catch up with you all soon, so.